What you consume determines what you create. Your environment, the people you surround yourself with, and the information you intake all shape your lens on life and what you make of it. Hello, I'm Matthew Encina, and in this video, I'll give you a tour of my bookshelves and share some of the influences that have shaped my own life. Before I begin, I want to thank Bloomscape for sponsoring this video. This video is part of an office makeover series, which you can watch the other episodes in the link below. Previously, I've shared the design process of my space, and today we're going to get into the details of what's on my shelves so you can get to know me a little better. Growing up, comic books, video games, and collectibles were a big part of my life. I loved the storylines, fight scenes, and characters, which all stimulated my imagination. These days, I keep a small batch of collectibles for nostalgic purposes and as a reminder not to grow up too fast. My favorite comics from the past few years have been the Avengers vs. X-Men storyline and the events that led up to it. This series was jam-packed with action, dream fights, and hopefully will be something that makes its way into the MCU at some point. On top of my shelf, I keep all of my figurines. On the left are a few Marvel characters, Ryu, and a Cloud action figure. Next to that are some Star Wars collectibles, including these samurai interpretations of Darth Vader and Darth Maul as well as a few made custom droids my wife and I built at Disneyland. In the middle I have this massive Doctor Doom by 3A, and it's the same company that made my PopBot, which is designed by Ashley Wood. The Ninja Turtles and Transformers were a big part of my morning ritual as a kid, so I collect these vinyl figurines made by the loyal subjects. Next to that is a bunch of amiibos, which I bought in Japan many years ago. I started collecting these when my old co-workers and I were at the height of our Super Smash Bros. days. More recently, they were used when playing Zelda Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Lastly, on top of my shelf is an old Vestax 05 mixer, a classic DJ tool from the past. I'll talk more about that later. Before we continue, I want to briefly thank the sponsor of this video, Bloomscape. One thing I like to populate my shelves with are plants. As you might have seen in a previous video, I'm a proud plant parent and like to keep them around to give life to my home. Some of my plants are from Bloomscape, which you might know for delivering healthy indoor plants right to your door. Recently, they've launched a new product, Bloom Kits, a mix of flowers and foliage that are a convenient way to get your outdoor areas ready for these warm seasons. Bloom Kits are customizable and include a variety of springtime plants. You can also add on containers, tools, and supplies to make setup easy and to keep your plants thriving throughout the season. I've had mine for a few months now and they are thriving in the sunshine on my balcony. Visit bloomscape.com or click the link in the description and use code Matthew and Sina for 20% off your first plant order of $100 or more. Thank you, Bloomscape. And now back to the bookshelf tour. I'm not a big reader, but I do have a collection of books that have positively impacted my life by giving me inspiration or a new way in which to see the world. Since I've renovated my office, I decided to reorganize my books, first by type, then grouped together by height and color to look more visually pleasing. Admittedly, this took a lot longer than expected to find an arrangement I like. In college, I studied graphic design at Art Center. One of my favorite types of assignments was poster design because it was a single opportunity to make a big statement. To this day, I still appreciate the craft behind it. One of my favorite books is The Art of Mondo. Much of the artwork you've seen in my spaces throughout the years has been purchased through Mondo, and this book is a collection of their releases. If you like pop culture and great design, I recommend getting this book. Another cool book I found at a local record shop last year was this collection of old hip-hop flyers from the 80s. I love these because of their lo-fi look, which were made using drawings and photocopiers, something that I really embraced as tools when I was designing in school. Growing up, one of my favorite cartoons was the Batman animated series because of its unique style. Phantom City Creative released this book of posters they designed to commemorate the show, which I absolutely love because the compositions are bold and powerful. I also like that they show their sketches and alternate ideas. I love reading about the process of how great works are made. This helps me mind walk in the artist's shoes and help me understand how they think and work. I've collected a few of the Art Of compilation books that share the visual development work that goes behind creating a movie. 
I particularly like this one for Spider-Verse because that movie had such a unique style to it. Seeing the process helps you appreciate all of the consideration to details the team makes in order to arrive at what you see on screen. Another type of book I like to collect are storyboarding and composition books. Most of what I do is create videos, which are essentially visual sequences. These books help me understand how to frame and sequence my shots best in order to tell a story. My favorite book is Framed Ink. I always refer back to this to relearn the fundamentals of composing a shot, from focal length to subject position and lighting. I highly recommend this if you want to get better at composition and storytelling. Speaking of getting better, I do have a batch of self-development books. These range from creativity, business, and soft skills. If you're a creative professional who deals with clients all the time, I highly recommend The Win Without Pitching Manifesto by Blair Enns. This book changed the way I interacted with clients because it gave me more confidence, a belief in the value I bring to the table and how to value myself. It's a small book packed with big gems. Two of my favorite books recently are The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield and Essentialism by Greg McEwen. The War of Art is a book that explores why we procrastinate and the remedy to that. Just show up and do the work. That's an oversimplified summary, but the way the author examines these ideas from multiple angles makes you feel vulnerable, understood, and gives you the motivation to start building momentum on your projects. Essentialism was instrumental to help me understand one key concept less but better, meaning to focus on the most impactful work while putting off everything else. Both of these books have helped me to gain clarity on what I should be working on and to help me fight off procrastination and distractions. One person who has fully adopted this less but better ethos in their work is legendary industrial designer Dita Rams. This book is a collection of all of his works which have a huge influence on modern product design. I love studying the perfect balance of form and function in his iconic designs. The last set of books I own are from individual artists who I admire. I keep these around for inspiration because of their line work, colors, and expression. Many of these I bought directly from the artists at conventions like the San Diego Comic Con and the CTN Animation Expo. A little over a decade ago, I used to shoot a lot with film. There was something about the entire process that helped train my eyes and set up my shots better. While there's nothing wrong with digital cameras, I feel like they reinforce the idea that you can take unlimited shots hoping one of them turns out good. Versus my experience with film, which feels more thoughtful. Because film can be expensive, I treat each shot more precious, carefully finding my composition, properly exposing it, then waiting for weeks for the image to develop. Shooting with film has made me more mindful and intentional about what I capture. My favorite film camera from my collection is the Mamiya 645 medium format camera. It's responsible for taking some of my favorite shots over the years. A big part of my life is music. Back in high school, I started to learn how to play the guitar and how to DJ, which are things I still do today for fun. My guitar is a Taylor GS Mini made of Hawaiian koa wood. This outputs a beautiful and rich sound. My DJ setup is made up of two Technique turntables, a Numark scratch mixer, and audio engine speakers. You can learn more about this setup in my previous video. I only have a small record collection because most of my library is digital. A few of my favorites are from Daft Punk, Alina Baraz, and the incredible Bongo Band a huge influence in the early days of hip hop. My most recent addition is Parachutes from Coldplay, one of my favorite bands and albums growing up. In 2014, I had the great fortune of directing an interactive music video for Coldplay's song, Inc. Being able to work on an innovative project for a band I admire was a dream for me and is a highlight from my career. This led to three Webby Awards and a decent amount of press, which takes us over to the wall near my desk. The shelves here hold a few awards that I've won over the years. This includes my 100k subscriber award from YouTube, thanks to you, and one of my Clio awards which I won for the work I did with Xbox a few years ago. I keep these on display as a reminder of where I come from, what I've accomplished, and the possibility of what's next. And that concludes my bookshelf tour. 
For the things I've shared today, I've left details and links in the description below. If you have any questions, ask, and I'll do my best to answer them. With that out of the way, it's time to get back to work.